Thank you very much and thank you for the invitation. I'm uh, very happy to be here and to see so many faces from the industry and I'm also willing to speak uh, afterwards about these uh, topics. Um, so I will speak about anomaly detection and I want to specify what kinds of anomalies I'm talking about by a story. So I was flying with my wife to Australia a couple of years ago and um, it's a long flight from northern Germany and uh, my wife is not very keen on flying. So I hoped everything will go smoothly and everything will be fine. Uh, we, had a, we had to change the flight in a major airport. And uh, okay, we entered the second aircraft. We are sitting in our seats when the pilot told us, oh, everybody has to disembark because we discovered a failure in one of our systems right now. Um, so please go out. And it was kind of tense situation. Um, and I was really happy that the airline provided everybody access to the business lounge with free champagne. This eased the situation for me quite a bit. Um, and of course, it would be great. So the safety measures were always were correct. I mean, we were sa at safe state every time. And uh, we flew afterwards without any problems. But it would be better for the airline and also better for the passengers if the Occurrence of this failure were discovered much earlier, uh, while there were no failure at all, but only, only the very first indications. And, and then maybe a repair would be scheduled on time so that the aircraft would not spend no time on ground and the airline wouldn't have to find a replacement aircraft on a short notice. And this is the direction in which I'm going. So first of all, we are entering a new age of connected aircrafts. Uh, for example, Airbus is providing the Skywise platform where airlines can subscribe and provide their whole data, the operational environment data. Uh, we have the in-service data from all flights. Uh, we have industrial data on our assets, how the industrial process works. We have all the financial data, supply chain data, and also um, data from uh, provide access to data to our um, suppliers of uh, particular parts. Um, if you look at an aircraft, um, a particular A320, for example, a single AL has over 24,000 parameters, which are um, sampled during flight, maybe up to 8 hertz. And all of this data becomes available from us for every flight. Um, how this data looks like? Um, all of it is, of course, time series. So this is our parameter values, which are continuous floats, but also booleans, the pilot decision stemmed um, at each second or even sub-second ranges. And it's more or less the beating uh, heart of an airplane. As you go to a doctor and you have an electrocardiogram, you can discover the health situation uh, from it. And also the same is true for an airplane. If we can go and look through all this data and find all the parameters which are uh, behaving strangely. Um, and um, if we look at a subsystem, Let's look at one particular subsystem of an aircraft, for example, air conditioning or something like this, which is not, maybe not even so safety critical. If we de define a system boundary, in order to describe the system, we have to take into account up to 500 parameters, which are not only system internal, because the state, uh, how the system changes over time, how all relevant parameters change over time, will depend on the, also on the pilot decisions to switch something on or off, and also on external conditions. And in turn, the system will have, uh, it will be propagating, the output will be propagating to other systems, which in turn will change their states. Um, and if we would look at the development of the system over time in this higher dimensional parameter space, we would see a movie where a point will wander in the space. And here we have a projection. And you see here, that's an industrial talk and not a talk from the university, because first of all, you don't know what parameters are and you see no access, which I would never predict, uh, present in a scientific conference. Uh, but that's how I can show everything. Um, so first of all, we see that it's very highly convoluted pattern. Uh, if you would do, and the color indicates uh, good and maybe anomal states uh, in yellow. So it's kind of, uh, at least in this projection, very hard to see why we could just think that this is uh, some kind of abnormal state. Uh, so naive clustering, in many of the cases, naive clustering approaches would of course not work. There are different uh, methods. Uh, we can come into it. So uh, we are looking for kind of small context-dependent deviations which are not covered by the usual rules because there are, of course, rules-based approaches in place which look for uh, deviations of temperatures over some time or deviations of particular parameters. And these are all developed with engineering in order to ensure the safety. And also, of course, if uh, in flight something happens, it's being indicated to the pilot. 
Here we are looking for something which looks uh, for the pilot completely transparent, so you don't see any uh, problem and none of the problems are indicated. Because uh, actually the behavior is uh, always within the defined range, but the type of behavior is strange. For example, let us see the, uh, on the left hand side, we see here different time series and we are interested in the red time series in the bottom. And we see here in the left hand plot an oscillation, which, we, which is a regular behavior. Why? And uh, because you can see the pilot commands uh, switching of some, something um, on the top in the yellow boxes. So we had a Boolean transition from zero to one. It means pilot has switched off some kind of switch. So we have a regular oscillation starting, which then converges to a nominal behavior. On the right hand side, we see the value of the same parameter with the same oscillation, where it is an abnormal behavior. So if you would look for um, um, kind of um, anomaly detection algorithm is just to take boundaries or regions, we would see that in this parameter it's the same behavior as in the regular case. So the, we would not discover maybe the anomaly. But the anomaly is there if you take into account that there were no command given at this point. So it's some, so the oscillation just started and then ended. Um, also in the other cases we have oscillations which start late after switching and go up instead of dying out or something like this. And this is what we are looking at. So this is always in context of um, all of the 500 vari variables describing the system. And the idea is to provide an industrial solution, um, like a semi-supervised human level performance, uh, which we want to achieve. So why semi-supervised? Because we assume that we have a lot of data nominal condition. Um, and for example, we can look into flights, which we have, uh, which are not in production, which are, which are not uh, in service, so not being delivered to airlines, but we have a lot of data on our flights, pre-production flights, where we make flight tests before delivery. Uh, human level, because if the, engineer, the engineers would have time to analyze all of 24,000 parameters in all possible contexts, they would discover this anomaly. So it's possible for a trained human to discover it but it's impossible due to lack of time um, uh, and, no, and the automatic systems which we have will discover only very big subnormal behaviors. Uh, we want so that then to start with one subsystem and building it up to different subsystem up to the full aircraft and maybe make then transfer learning and seek how we can apply the same architecture for industrial asset in general and manufacturing machines and so on. Um, of course, we need some kind of anomaly visualization system similar to the one presented from the NASA, and uh, uh, we also have a stable industrial kind of solution uh, first for our engineers evaluating the test flights. Uh, so what are the deep learning approaches? There are also statistical approaches like functional principal component analysis, which was mentioned earlier, and uh, we have also a toolkit um, which was developed at our research um, where we are thinking about open sourcing it, which combines a lot of uh, anomaly detection tools for the industry, uh, many of them from this kind of statistical nature. I will focus now on some of the deep learning approaches. The idea is always to learn from nominal samples. Um, so if you look at auto encoders, you can encode the whole time series or maybe chunks of sliding windows or windows of time series uh, have some kind of internal representation and then try to reconstruct the time series back from this uh, latent space. And what you see, uh, what the theory says, is if you do it on a nominal behavior, uh, you will reconstruct it very easily. If you apply it to a non-nominal um, kind of time series, then the reconstruction error should be much higher. And also in the second, in, you could also have cases where in the internal representation in the latent space, you can discard, um, uh, construct kind of metrics, construct a distance metric, and see that there are distances between the different, um, in this internal space, a distance between the different time series. Since we are looking at my, um, highly multivariate approaches, it's very um, a difficult um, situation here. There are also approaches based on gener um, generative auto of, on GANs, <laughs> Um, adversarial models. Uh, what we are looking at are uh, models based on prediction. So here we try to train a model on nominal flights and this model should predict the next state of the system based on the past. So we ingest the past and tell it, predict how the system will behave in the future. Um, and then we compare the predicted values with the actual measured values. And you can see it above in the middle. So here is a, a variable, a variation of a some variable over time over entire flight. Um, this, uh, the 
y-axis is normalized. And um, we see that the measured data is very noisy and there are a lot of oscillations. These are kind of anomalies there. And the predictions are very smooth and uh, can hold, a, and we see clearly the difference between the prediction and the measured data. And if you compute the residuals, we see the spikes there. And with a special measure for anomaly where we define the cutoff, we can say, okay, these are regions where there were anomaly present in the data. And of course, the other part of the problem is to find how to define the cutoffs, where there are also a lot of theories on it. Uh, and we can speak a lot about it uh, afterwards, if you like. So our initial approach was actually based on a paper from NASA, from Hansmann et al. from 2018, where they used two-layer LSTM model to predict the future values of parameters from a spacecraft. And we applied it to our um, airline or aircraft-based model. Um, you have a lot of decisions to take. For example, you can decide how many values you want to ingest from the past. You can decide whether you do a uh, model which is based only on the value of your interest, so you ingest the same value from the past and predict its future, which is an autoregressive model, more or less. You can go multivariate and ingest all the parameters you have to predict one value. And you also can decide how the prediction is being made into the future. Do you predict only the next value? Do you leave a gap? Do you predict one value or a range? So and this is what we will call the horizon in the next slides. And depending on these choices, the model behaves very differently. If you take the simplest model, which you uh, find uh, if you do an online course and do a horizon one prediction, the model will learn perfectly the past because it will predict just the same value it saw lastly. So you have completely uh, predicted all the anomalies with it and actually it hasn't learned anything. If you go further with the horizon, so if you uh, tell it to predict further and further into in future, it will take more and more other parameters into account and the behavior will change. And we see here the uh, change in the behavior between um, uh, going from horizon 1 to horizon 30. And we can qualify it also by computing the correlation. So we can uh, take the predicted and measured values and then shift the measured values across the predicted ones and take the location of the maximum correlation um, across the horizon because you will get... And what we see is uh, that... In the simplest model, it's on the diagonal, so uh, if you shift it by one, it will predict uh, actually the last value it saw as the next value. The behavior changes if you go with the horizon is going up, and also the strength of the correlation falls down. Um, I must say this is different. The, the plots are a little bit different depending on the nominal uh, or anomalous data, and in order to do it more scientifically, we would uh, need further investigations. But in general, we see that the behavior changes so that the model learns actually the system behavior. Um, but we are at Airbus, so we are not only thinking about own, own models, we are looking also what the industry has to offer. So we have a platform where we can collaborate with different companies on a massive scale. Uh, it's a similar to Kaggle, it's called AI Gym. If you go currently there, you will see that it's now under uh, again under development for the next version. And uh, there we host a number of challenges on particular problems. Our aim is to find innovative companies with maybe better solutions or with interesting different solutions where we work together with them to create something for us. And we hosted a time series challenge in the last year where we have created a data set of unlabeled data of 90 parameters, so 89 parameters. So we said that 81 of them were the context parameters describing the system, and we were interested in anomalies in eight out of the, um, in eight parameters. Uh, we had uh, six, in total 1,000 data sets, uh, one being 600 over 600 ground tests and flights, and already during the training phase, the community was able to discover 17 anomalies in this nominal training set. But our gold chest, I would say, is the validation set, uh, where we had um, 50 data, um, like flights, I would call in general, it was flights and ground tests, where we sat with engineers and labeled the anomalies. We had two, actually three engineers sitting from us, looking through all, for only one subsystem, through the whole flights. And engineering hours is very expensive. And it took us three total days to go through this one subsystem at only 50 flights to label in time all the anomalies so, this, so, so that we have a golden data set. And you can see there my colleague Sarah uh, with um, uh, Torsten from uh, Manufacturing Engineering and some other colleagues are on the phone and they go in our visualization tool and look exactly where is the anomaly. 
And we were very happy about uh, the challenge results because it's a hard problem. Um, so the winner team is actually coming from Lausanne. I'm meeting them tomorrow. It's a data operator startup here providing uh, some kind of um, system for continuous intelligence and uh, specify uh, their specializing in time series um, analysis. So they have achieved a score of 0 0.5, uh, which sounds not much, but if you would do it on, so what is the baseline? You, uh, people often ask, what is the baseline? And um, the baseline is zero. So if you just, because we are not looking, we don't look for a label for the whole flight, whether there are anomalies or not. We were looking exactly, tell us in which sensor, from what point in time to what point in time there were an anomaly. And we were computing overlaps between submitted anomalies and the actual. So if you predict an anomaly in the flight, but it's on a completely different time range, you would get a score of zero. So you have to be really in the correct time ranges in the correct sensors. And um, we were quite uh, happy with the results. And we see that there are a number of teams on the top which are quite good, and then a re very rapid decline to zero uh, to the baseline. Um, so we are l currently working together with them um, on a one aircraft subsystem to first scale it up, to go to my, my more parameters, and to develop first industrial solution. So our goal is to go fast into production and create an industrial uh, system which is deployed uh, for manufacturing engineering so that the engineers get good results with high, I would say, um, we are looking for actually high precision in order to not to overwhelm them with anomalies because after some point they will not look into the data. And develop based on this, we are want to expand, expand this work and create a platform and a kind of platform solution for Airbus for anomaly detection in time series. And I'm looking forward to discussions afterwards. Thank you very much.